So we had yet another red day for the overall markets. And in regards to Tesla stock, it wasn't that great of a day either. However, if we turn our heads to Ford stock, it is an absolute bloodbath as Ford shares recently tumbled amid concerns about EV slowdowns and of course, higher costs following UAW strikes. In fact, in Ford's recent earnings call, we hear that they're slowing down several investments in their electric vehicle transition, taking a market-based approach similar to GM. Ford goes on to say that they're slowing down in their EV segment to better match demand. And so essentially what Ford is saying is that people don't want to buy EVs anymore. However, that's not necessarily entirely true. In fact, if we actually take a look at this graph over here, which is from the Department of Energy, just showing us plug and sale vehicles, which could be hybrid vehicles, plug in hybrid vehicles, battery uh, vehicles, um, essentially all these plug in vehicles. And we see that the man is actually increasing pretty much quarter over quarter, I mean, year over year, we're seeing an exponential amount of growth. And so with these legacy automakers saying that they're slowing up in their EV segments simply because EV demand is softening up, well, that's completely utter and of course, I want to refrain from using any profanity here, but it's essentially BS. And so what we know with these legacy automakers is that they are not profitable on their EV vehicles. And this is why if they reduce their prices to compare and match Tesla's prices, well, they lose a ton of capital. In fact, Tesla has pricing power where, yes, it hurts their profit margins when they reduce prices, but they're still able to remain profitable. These legacy automakers are not profitable. So when you take that into account with the fact that we're entering into this economic cycle where things are not looking too well well of course they can't really focus on this ev space they have to focus on their internal combustion engines because that's the only profit cow in their business and so they have to slow down on evs but essentially this is good for tesla in the long term now i'm not saying that there's no challenges for tesla currently in fact we definitely have to talk about what's going on with tesla stock and what we're seeing but what i'm essentially trying to say is that these legacy automakers are completely lying with the fact that demand is slowing down with ev vehicles in fact i want to point out to this tweet from fellow youtuber farzar saying hilarious how the narrative has shifted away from the competition is coming to now people didn't want evs anyway and he goes on to say that tell me you're giving up without telling me right and then of course we have elon musk responding with a laughing emoji because it is completely laughable with the excuse that these legacy automakers are saying and that's why their stock is falling tremendously more than the direction of the overall market and tesla i mean just look at what's going on with ford but with that said i want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop this way we could take a closer look at tesla stock from a fundamental perspective from a technical perspective as well as just cover some of the economic data points that we have to be aware of and also cover some of the sentiment of what we're currently seeing in the overall markets because i think there's going to be something coming up that's going to be taking a lot of market participants by surprise and so we definitely have to cover those topics but before we go ahead and hop into my laptop if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button this way you don't miss out on any future uploads and also consider checking out the links in the description below and also the pinned comment because there's going to be a link for my free market post insights where every single week I send out an email talking about what's going on with the overall markets and things that we have to be aware of and again guys it's completely free so there's no reason why you shouldn't just sign up for that and with that said Let's go ahead and hop into my laptop. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at Tesla stock. Now, of course, uh, there's some price levels that we definitely had to talk about, but before we even talk about the technicals with Tesla, I wanna go ahead and just kinda provide an outlook of what's going on with the overall markets, also cover some, some aspects from a fundamental perspective, and then also talk about some economic data. And so uh, what I wanted to kinda do is just look at the S&P 500, uh, index ETF, ticker symbol SPY, and zoom out for a bit. So we've seen a lot of selling going on right moreover the trading volume that we've witnessed suggests that the markets have uh, seen some losses and there's definitely some panic i mean if you zoom in look at all these red uh volume candles over here also if you look at the price action a lot of red and so one of the things <clears throat> i've been telling the push and profit private group or just recently told them actually is that we're kind of seeing the effects of tax harvesting now what is tax harvesting right so if you're unfamiliar with that, that's essentially a strategy where market participants, they sell off 
underperforming assets or losing assets to offset capital gains taxes, right? And so in a turbulent market like what we're seeing now, this is somewhat of an attractive option for a lot of these market participants looking to kind of minimize their tax liabilities while also restructuring their portfolio. I mean, essentially just getting rid of the losers this way when you sell the winners well at least you you are getting rid of the stuff that's not working and keeping the winners or, or you know or at least if you do sell the winners you pay less taxes on that and so it's just a kind of a tax strategy that market participants will employ and so uh, a lot of mutual funds they end their fiscal year uh, on in october the end of october and so uh, the same is true in the, these large bond funds as well and so of course these funds they manage trillions of dollars in 2023 uh, 2023 hasn't been that great of a year and so uh, with all these heavy losses selling kind of allows these institutional investors to realize their losses and declare their losses this way uh, they could actually offset their wins okay and so that's kind of what we're witnessing now the pressures from tax harvesting I believe that they're going to ease by the end of the month and we should see somewhat of a relief and uh, this also coincides with some uh, uh, technical perspective as well because when we're looking at the SPY we see things are falling down we see that there's this big shelf of volume relative to price meaning that there's a lot of exchange between buyers and sellers around this area and we clearly see that this area has been somewhat of a support in the past so we could touch this and then end up um, seeing a lot of the selling pressures uh, end right and so that's going to provide some relief i also believe that there's going to be some relief with these high yields as well and so this kind of goes along with uh these these uh not too bad inflation figures and as well as that the federal reserve is going to uh most likely continue a neutral stance for this month and the next month so for those of you guys that don't know i've been talking about it for quite some time but november 1st is when we have the federal reserve decide or make their decision on monetary policy and it's most likely that they're going to pause uh, and not hike rates. And so that could provide a bullish catalyst for the overall markets as well. And so, uh, you know, softer data, uh, you know, in other countries could also set some stabilization for the markets. Of course, we can't control political conflicts or geopolitical conflicts. So there's always the unknown in the markets that things that we can't trigger but uh, or control. But of course, there's some stuff coming soon that could trigger this somewhat of an uptick, like a little bit of a uh, push up for the markets before the deeper economic conditions set in. And this could potentially throw a lot of individuals off. And so that's why I say that there's something shocking coming in the market because a lot of selling going on and f there's always people that are late to the party, right? I've been talking about Tesla saying, hey, let let's go ahead and pan over to Tesla. How, hey, you know, after the earnings, uh, I believe much more selling to go on. I know, of course, a couple of people said, no, Justin, you're crazy. Uh, then when Tesla was around over here, uh, you know, while many believed that Tesla was going to bounce last time, I said, uh, not comfortable with adding more into my long term position for Tesla. Of course, you get some people on YouTube saying, Justin, you're crazy. Right. But eventually, as we see more selling off, those people jump on board. But we always get those people who are habitually late. Right. Uh, there's this quote uh, from this movie Goodfellas. It's like you're late to everything. You're late to your own funeral, right? And so essentially, there's going to be people late to, uh, and they're going to start shorting the market, and the markets may start bouncing up, and uh, they may just uh, just get painfully hurt. And so that's why I said that there's something uh, shocking coming into the markets, right? And so when we're looking at all this. Uh, again, I'm not saying that a huge bounce is going to happen with the overall markets. I'm not saying it's all uphill from here. I just believe that some relief is likely to come soon, both on an economic perspective, technical perspective, uh, as well as sentiment and, and what's going on with, with these uh, fund managers and what they're doing with their capital. And so a little bit of relief, but that doesn't change my overall outlook. As I've said, if you guys have been following this channel uh, for quite some time, if you guys are OGs of the channel, <laughs> I like to say sometimes, um, or you guys are part of the push and profit private group i've said that hey look 2023 was going to be a good year for the first half right and i said this because we had a lot of selling uh in 2022 a lot of selling i mean one of the most shorted stocks i had uh in 2022 was meta but that changed in 2023 meta was definitely something that was super bullish as well as tesla but i said going into the third and fourth quarter things are going to be challenging and that's exactly what we saw we saw uh you know earnings over here tesla fall had a little bit of a rebound now things are falling I don't change my outlook that things are going to be challenging. And yes, I am bullish on Tesla in the long term, but overall, I still believe that there's going to be more challenging times 
uh, coming soon. And so, in summary, the market is currently more uh, weak than there, uh, more weaker than there is as in strength, right? And so, due to a mix of distinct uh, yet interconnected pressures from all these different variables, um, we we could see something uh, shocking coming soon as relief may come uh, in the near future. But again, still, uh, there's. A lot to consider, especially the fact that we had a new uh, speaker appointed, right? I'm not a big fan of politics. If you guys know, I, you know, <laughs> I'll just keep it there. I'll let us not go too much into it. But, um, I, of course, looking into the market, you have to kind of pay attention to what these politicians do because, unfortunately, even if you're participating in the markets and you're trying to stay agnostic to, you know, what these politicians are doing, they have control over what we do uh, fiscally. And so, of course, we have to pay attention to that because government spending could issue, uh, uh, could impact bonds and the supply and demand with bonds. And so, unfortunately, you can't be agnostic to the political environment as well. So I have to stay, uh, you know, abreast of what's going on. And so um, there's still that uh, possibility of a looming uh, government shutdown as negotiations may be uh, a little bit more contest uh, contentious this time, uh, particularly because of the new Speaker Johnson. Um, and so that's something that we could see going forward, but that's not something we're seeing now. Now, uh, hopefully you guys are not lost. Uh, they're still in the video because, again, I do want to talk about Tesla stock from a, uh, you know, you know we talked about some, some of the sentiment and some things to be aware of, tax loss harvesting, a couple of topics. But I want to go ahead and talk about, you know, the technicals and also some of the fundamentals, right? So I want to go ahead and hop into this tweet over here where I shared how everyone always argues and asks, why is Tesla's market cap $644 billion? Well, Ford is only, uh, you know, market cap of $45 billion, right? And I said, just look at these numbers and explain to me where the growth for Ford is. People uh, put more value to Tesla because of the growth story, and hopefully this ends the battle between both. So what am I referring to? Well, I recently quoted this uh, thread from Jameson uh, Stephenson. I hope I'm not butchering his name here, um, that he posted on x.com uh, of course it's not hard to do what he does it's just extracting the data putting it on excel but you know oftentimes you know it's very convenient to have someone like him you know put it in these little pretty uh, photos over here so he says that now that gm and ford have published the third quarter numbers i have updated my charts comparing them against tesla right and so essentially we have this user on x uh, just providing this data very nicely for us so i definitely appreciate that uh he says uh their full year for 2023 should look a lot worse than uh this when their negative financial impacts from the uaw strikes hits uh, q4 so uh we talked about in a previous video how uh <laughs> you know gm they're losing like 200 million dollars per week uh because of these strikes right because these uh strikes are, are hurting the manufacturing process or it's disrupting the workforce where they're uh, attacking certain plants and huge plants and so that's pretty bad and so we're going to see that uh, actually impact q4 for a lot of these uh, legacy automakers it's going to get bad for them i'm not saying things are not bad for tesla it's going to be bad for tesla but man these legacy automakers true it's going to be bad super bad now unfortunately i'm not going to buy puts on any of these uh, companies because uh, the options for GM and Ford, there, there's not a lot of volume, so I may just short the underlying shares. Again, not telling you guys to do that, right? I'm just saying that's something I may do, but let's go ahead and talk about this. So uh, he says, here's how deliveries compare going to back to 2020, or 2016. Sorry. So we have a uh, Ford, and we see this descending pattern. Yeah, a little bit of a pickup in the last couple of years, right? GM, same thing, descending pattern, last uh, pickup in the last couple of years. Uh, Tesla ascending pattern okay so that's good news for tesla the growth is there right uh, he also says that ford and gm have lost more than 2 million uh, vehicles sold per year compared to 2016 mostly due to retiring sedans to focus more on profitable trucks and suvs here's the same chart except for revenue and billions of dollars so uh again somewhat the similar pattern right it's not this continuous exponential growth story that we see for tesla okay nice well let's go ahead and continue scrolling down so then he says ford and gm are posting record high revenues but a tiny uh carg uh, i always mess this up uh, <laughs> cagr of uh, approximately two percent since 2016 tesla's more like 50 percent but what about earnings <laughs> i like how he writes this i hear you ask right yes Net income is lower for Tesla over the past four quarters when compared to full year 2022, but Tesla still looks pretty good versus Ford and GM, even before the uh, huge Q4 losses likely to result from the UAW strikes. Again, uh, it's not hard to tell 
uh, looking at this, right? And this is why I, I definitely appreciate him for uh, uh, putting this uh, the, the fundamentals into these pretty charts because oftentimes the, the hard labor in, in really doing fundamental analysis comes from really doing a lot of these numbers, looking at these financial ratios, right? Uh, most people, they only know how to do technical analysis, uh, maybe if that, right, looking at the charts. Uh, but most people, they're, they're not familiar with fundamental analysis. And so uh, having someone just being able to put that into a pretty little chart that's very easy to read. I think a monkey, right? <laughs> a monkey could see this and say, oh, well, Tesla good, Ford and GM bad. Probably not a monkey. Maybe a, a caveman. Maybe, maybe, right? Uh, anyways, he says, on remember, Tesla only sells four models. Ford and GM each offer dozens of models. And then he says, when you look at it on a net income per vehicle sold basis, Tesla really shines through. Um, so definitely, uh, and then there's definitely more. But I, I think this is enough to kind of just give you guys an idea of why you know the market cap for tesla is significantly higher right there's that growth uh embedded in there and so uh we talked a little bit about the sentiment a little bit about the fundamentals uh now let's go ahead and talk uh, somewhat of the technicals and then we'll hop into some economic data right so uh one thing that we are seeing is yes as i mentioned a big shelf of uh, volume relative to price over here uh, in the past this has been somewhat of a resistance and past resistance could act as support and so we're seeing everything line up where we could potentially see a mini relief but again i i don't expect that relief to really uh sustain itself i think it's going to be um a very short-lived uh relief in fact uh, i've been really calling out this area of uh 180 around over here for uh, tesla stock uh, looking at, at that's an area that i may look into buying into my long-term portfolio but there's been someone that's been commenting on my videos for quite some time i, I can't pronounce the name i didn't pull up uh his comment and if he's watching this then he knows who he is but uh, he's been talking about this area right over here where there's this gap around 145 saying hey tesla is going to fall down much more worse uh, than you're saying justin and it's going to fall down to this area so i just want to clarify something so when i'm saying this 180 dollar level essentially this is just an area where i'm going to be watching tesla meaning i'm going to see what tesla does at this area because again i still have to wait for confirmation of an uptrend something that i teach and, and explain in the push and profit uh, program and also within the private group where uh, just because something touches an area that I'm watching doesn't mean I automatically buy and pull the trigger it just means I'm gonna watch and so you know maybe that person who uh, has been commenting about this area is is correct and maybe Tesla may fall down not saying that it can't I'm just saying that first I'm gonna look at the 180 levels and then from there if that still declines and of course I'll look at this area he's been pointing out that there's a Definitely a, uh, a gap over here, right? A gap fill uh, is going to happen with Tesla where it's going to fall down and fill that gap. Again, we don't know. Uh, I don't put too much weight on technical analysis, but that is another level uh, that um, I think is going to be interesting to watch if we don't hold up of this 180 level, which, uh, by the way, this should show you guys that I do read the comments, okay? I see what you guys are saying. I hear the people that say, you're crazy, Justin, and I also hear the people saying, hey, Justin, have you looked at this area? And so that's why I appreciate when you guys do comment down below. Um, um, like I said, I read those comments. I definitely uh, look into it. Um, and so I, I, I think that commenter is, could be correct, right? But of course, I'm looking at it from a level to level basis. But uh, before we even talk about the economic data, uh, if we do start bouncing up, remember that over here, there's little volume. So if there's buying pressure around here, it could uh, quickly, uh, you know, find some relief upwards, just like what we saw last time when Tesla bounced around over here. So uh, definitely something to remember. Of course, back over here, another shelf of a lot of volume, which is why we saw Tesla green, red, green, red, green, red, until it had some catalysts that pushed it up, and then it got rejected by this descending trend line. So um, probably a lot that I said over here, but let's go ahead and uh, look into some of the economic data coming out. So of course, November 1st is a huge day. Uh, we had the ADP employment numbers. These are like the private sector numbers for the labor market. They always come before uh, the government job data, right? Um, so definitely something to watch out for. But of course, everyone's going to watch out for the Federal Reserve, uh, Reserve's decision on interest rates. And of course, uh, Fed Chairman's uh, press conference says this is kind of like the forward guidance. I always say you want to treat these uh, uh, 
you know, Fed decisions like an earnings, uh, you know, day, right? You first, you get the numbers for earnings, right? Typically, just like what we got with Ford or Tesla, you get the, the data, the numbers. So we're going to see what the Federal Reserve, uh, their decision is. And then, of course, afterwards, just like uh, earnings call, you hear the forward guidance. You Like we heard with Tesla, what Elon Musk said, we're going to hear the forward guidance from Jerome Powell and what they're saying. Of course, more likely to stay vague. Uh, I don't expect anything to be very... Uh, uh, directional, right? Um, as as he has to also keep up with inflation expectations. And so I understand what they have to do um, and what they say. And so this is going to be uh, something that could provide uh, provide some relief with the markets. Um, I completely forgot to mention job openings take place that day too. Uh, we're going to want to see this uh, soften up a bit as that's what the Federal Reserve wants to see as well. We also get ISM manufacturing, construction spending. So it's a very data heavy intensive day for November 1st. Uh, of course, some uh, more data November 2nd, uh, weekly initial jobless claims. Okay, okay. Uh, and then, you know, Friday, like I said, we get the hourly wages, unemployment rate, non farm payroll. So, uh, a huge week uh, going into uh, next week. So, uh, definitely a lot to pay attention to uh, towards the second half of the week. The first half of the week, uh, n- not much, right? Monday, no data. Tuesday, yeah, we have consumer confidence, Chicago uh, business barometer, uh, you know, a couple of things to watch out for. But definitely all the main data comes out for next week. So, if you're someone who's uh, trading in the short term, Perhaps you want to wait for these days as that's where the big price action is going to happen. Um, But if you're someone who's investing in Tesla in the long term, again, you should only trade and invest in whatever you see value in. You should never copy or do whatever I'd say or any other YouTuber or anyone on X or any fund manager. I always got to say this just because... um, Again, it's not financial advice, but even uh, though it's not financial advice, I still want to clarify, you still shouldn't copy anyone or only do whatever you see value in. I said when Tesla stock was bouncing up over here, I said, hey, not comfortable with Tesla. I know I got some pushback. People said you're crazy. And that's fine. It's fine to completely uh, have your own opinion. And, you know, maybe some individuals may agree with me. It's falling down. But if you agree with me, it has to be because you see the value too. It's not because you just say, oh, well, Justin said it's going to fall down. So I I think I'm going to short too, right? The the biggest uh, pet peeve I have is if people ever comment, well, Justin, you said this and this happened and, you know, whatever. I don't have a crystal ball, right? I just look at the the markets from um, you know various different data points right I look at options flow I look at the alternative data as well and so you know I, I don't have a crystal ball I just I just look at several different data points yes uh, oftentimes I'm more accurate than a lot of the individuals you see on on FinTwit and that's simply because they're only looking at the charts they're only looking at one data point versus uh, we're, we're looking at everything over here but with that said again you know something you guys want to be aware of uh, something else that's coming up for Tesla that's going to be a huge catalyst event and it's going to ha- shape the sentiment for Tesla is November 30th where we had the Cybertruck announcements okay uh, so definitely a lot to be aware of for Tesla we're going to be watching these levels again still long term bullish on tesla just right now i believe that there's a lot of economic challenges and i think tesla is not going to be you know it's not going to uh what's the word i'm trying to look for here uh it's going to go along with with everyone else it's going to have some pain during these economic challenges but i think tesla is best positioned to thrive after the you know cyclical market changes right we know things change bear markets don't last forever bull markets don't last forever either right uh and eventually this bear market right it's a secular bear market it's gonna end eventually and when it ends i think that you know tesla is positioned to do fairly uh well and so that's why i'm bullish for tesla in the long term but with that said i'm not gonna try to do this uh any much longer i think um Everything I needed to say for the end of this week is said. Uh, So before you guys go, make sure to watch this next video right over here. But if you already saw that video and you're interested in real estate, maybe consider watching this next video right over here. But regardless, I'll see you guys on those next videos. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care.